Today we're going to talk about the physically based shading nodes in Material X, which are closely related to the theme of this course and still the relatively new feature of the Material X project. I'm Jonathan Stone from the Lucasfilm Advanced Development Group, and my co-presenter today will be Niklas Harrison from Autodesk. In this first section, we'll give a bit of background on what Material X is and set the stage for what motivated the development of the physically based shading nodes. Material X was launched at Lucasfilm back in 2012 as part of a broad initiative to build assets that would be independent of the tools in which they were authored and the media for which they were first created. We knew that there would be new shows and experiences in the Star Wars universe for many years to come, and we wanted to begin building a digital backlog for Star Wars content that would remain useful far into the future. In the spirit of existing open source initiatives such as Alembic, OpenEXR, and OpenColorIO, which captured geometry, textures, and color spaces in an application-agnostic fashion, Material X was created to describe materials in the expressive networked form that they were authored by artists and tools such as Mari, Substance, and Maya. The first film to use Material X as its main material format was Star Wars The Force Awakens in 2015, and that same year it was used in its first real-time experience, a virtual reality project called Trials on Tatooine from a newly formed Lucasfilm unit named ILM XLAM. As Material X was building in its usage at Lucasfilm and becoming our canonical format for materials, we began discussing it as a potential open standard with a widening group of studios and companies across the industry. One notable discussion from that era was with Autodesk, who had been developing a similar internal standard named Abstract Material Graphs. After learning more about the synergy between the two standards, both of our companies decided to rally development efforts around Material X, with Autodesk working to include their own innovations as part of this single standard. The first public specification for Material X was released in 2016, and it became an open source project on GitHub in 2017. So, to get a sense of what a Material X graph looks like, here's an example from the film Ready Player One, where it expressed the surface material for a building in the New York City sequence. In this image, we're seeing the pattern graphs for a complex surface material asset in two very different environments, Maya using Solid Angle's Arnold renderer and Katana using Pixar's RIS renderer. Material X was used to describe this shading graph in a unified way across these environments. With comparable render results, as seen here, this enabled workflows where artists could block out a surface material in one of the two environments and then finalize and render it in the second without rebuilding any of the subtle details that they had originally authored. This classic usage of Material X is a step in the right direction, and it works well for the pattern graphs that artists author in tools such as Maya and Katana, defining the complex signals that are fed into the inputs of a shading model. In this slide, we're looking at an example of such a shading model the original Disney principled BRDF that Brent Burley presented in 2012. But if we're truly aiming to express materials independently of their authoring environment, don't we need to somehow describe the shading model just as rigorously as the patterns that feed into it? Although popular open models such as Disney principled have white papers that guide the author of a new implementation, there's still significant variation in those implementations across applications and renderers. In order to make material assets truly independent of the tools and media for which they were first developed, allowing them to be transferred accurately between studios or stored in digital backlots for reuse far in the future, we'll also need to rigorously express the shading models on which those materials are based. This was the motivation in our minds and what led Lucasfilm and Autodesk to collaborate on a project to extend the Material X node set from pure patterns to include shading model components creating a new library of physically-based shading nodes. Here I'll hand the presentation over to my colleague, Niklas Harrison at Autodesk. Thanks, Jonathan. At its core, the material model in this library is a set of distribution functions, capturing the scattering and emission of light at surfaces and in volumes. This abstraction exists already in high-level shading languages like OSL and MDL. In OSL, there is a collective closure type for all the various light interactions, whereas in MDL, this is more strictly typed with three distribution function types. BSDFs for light scattering at surfaces, EDFs for light emitted from surfaces or volumes, and VDFs for light scattering in volumes. 
we choose to follow this stricter typing, since with the separation between the various light interactions, we direct the user and prevent creation of nonsensical graphs. Having a strict separation also makes it easier on the implementation side, especially for rasterization where we don't have these concepts natively in the shading language. In our library, nodes represent different variations of these function types, and by combining them, you build up your shading model. For BSDF nodes, we have assembled a set of popular and widespread BRDF models that are commonly used today. Our standard node for diffuse reflection is based on the ORNIR BRDF, a secondary node for diffuse reflection based on a diffuse component from the Disney principle BRDF. For specular nodes, we have split them based on the Fresnel model used. So for dielectric materials, we have one node for reflection, another node for transmission, for metals, a node with physical conductor Fresnel, and in addition, we have a node using Schlick Fresnel, a general model with more artistic freedom. We have a sheen BRDF for the backscattering effect of cloth like materials, a subsurface BSDF for the effect of light scattering under the surface, and a thin film BRDF for the rainbow like iridescence effects. Now, in order to construct more complex shading models from these BSDF nodes, we need layering, so atomic BSDFs can be combined to form multi layer materials. To describe layering in our model, we differentiate between horizontal layering and vertical layering. Horizontal layering is a statistical mix of two BSDFs. An example is shown here, mixing between a conductor layer and a dielectric over diffuse layer, where the mixing weight controls the metalness. To describe this, we have extended the standard Material X mix node to support the BSDF type to mix these nodes. In vertical layering, the BSDFs are placed on top of each other, describing a coating over a substrate. The light that is not reflected by the top layer is transmitted down to the layer below. The substrate can be a transmissive BSDF and transmit the light further through the surface, or a reflective BSDF to reflect some of the light back up through the coating. To describe vertical layering, we introduce a layer node that connects the top and base BSDFs and outputs the new layered BSDF. These nodes can be nested to describe many vertical layers, as in this example. In addition to BSDF nodes, we have nodes to define the various EDFs and VDFs, but this is out of scope for this talk. Using BSDFs, EDFs and VDF nodes, together with the layering operators, we can now construct shaders by connecting these networks to shader constructor nodes. There are constructor nodes for surface, volume, light and displacement shaders. And finally, shader nodes are connected to the root material nodes to define the material. The next section is a case study of how these nodes can be used to construct an industry production Uber shader. In parallel to the development of the physical obey shading nodes, at Autodesk we were in the process of developing an open standard Uber shading model for offline and real-time rendering. This provided us with a valuable proving ground for the new Material X shading nodes. Standard surface was defined as a graph from its inception, so this fits very well to our model. Here we show the layering configuration in graph form, where each edge in the graph gives the weighting to use for layers below it. So this is what we want to describe with our Material X nodes. And here we'll look at the resulting graph built from the Material X nodes. This is an instance of standard surface, and we can take a look at its implementation graph. Here we see how the various layers are formed and connected in the layer stack. Diffuse and subsurface scattering, layered with sheen, then mixed with transmission, and over this a primary specular plus thin film, then mixed with a conductor for metalness, and finally a secondary specular coating. This we feed into the shader constructor, which also takes an EDF input for emission, and an input for cutout opacity. Once the shading model is described in Material X form, we can render it in different renderers, here showing examples rendered in Arnold and in iRay. And here's another example of an asset built with standard surface, rendered consistently across three different systems, including OpenGL rasterization. From left to right we have iRay, Arnold and Material X view. So now on to implementation details. In order to render these graphs on different architectures, we use Material X code generation. So the graph is translated to shader code for different target renderers. By supporting open standard shading languages like OSL and MDL, we hope to ease the adoption of Material X shader graphs. If you have a renderer using such a language, you can take advantage of this right away. To support the physically based shading nodes and all materials constructed this way, you just need to have closures that can represent these BSDFs. Out of the box you also get full support for the Material X standard library, 
with all of its math and texturing nodes. The system is extendable to new shading languages or new targets for already supported languages, like in different OpenGL viewports or different OSL renderers. Now a closer look at some of the BSDF nodes and how they are implemented, both in the context of real-time rendering and offline rendering. Our standard diffuse reflection node is a standard implementation of Orin IR, and the Burley diffuse reflection node closely follows the Disney paper from 2012. All the following wedge renderings compare our real-time implementations with offline implementations. Our conductor BRDF is based on a standard microfacet model. We use the physical conductor Fresnel with a complex refraction index, but with the artistic reparameterization of this from Guldbranson to make it easier to control. To compensate for energy missing from multiple scattering on rough surfaces, we use the method from Turkin. It's simple enough to be used both for offline and real-time rendering. For offline rendering, an option is to use the method from Conti and Kulla instead. Here we show gold rendered with these two methods, and a comparison with having energy compensation disabled. For our dielectric nodes, we use the same microfacet model, only with different Fresnel terms. Either a physical dielectric Fresnel, or a Schlick Fresnel with facing and grazing reflectance. Including the conductor Fresnel from before, we now have three different Fresnel models. It's not ideal to have three different nodes to handle specular reflections, but it's an intentional choice in Material X, since there are popular shading models that rely upon each of these approaches for accurate rendering. But we are closely following the research in this area, for example as shown in the talk just before this one. Having a single Fresnel model that can cover all needs would simplify our library. Being the electrics, these nodes are layerable and can be placed as a coating on top of other BSDFs using the layer operator. We implement vertical layering by albedo scaling, where we estimate the top layer's directional albedo and scale the response from layers below by the inverse of this. We support three different methods for estimating the albedo. Analytic curves, if we have a curve fit to approximate the albedo. Lookup tables, pre-calculated using Monte Carlo integration or Monte Carlo integration on the fly at runtime. The wedges here show a furnace test comparison of these methods, with a dielectric TGX specular layered over a diffuse. The top image shows results when using a single mirror Fresnel to approximate the reflectance. As expected, it only works for a low roughness. With a curve fit to the directional albedo we can do better, improving the results a lot for higher roughness values. Using a Monte Carlo integration and important sampling of the albedo, here with 64 samples, we get almost perfect results. But by pre-calculating this to a lookup table, we can get away with a similar result and avoid the runtime sampling. Here's a comparison of the errors introduced to show this more clearly. It's worth noting that our layering description does not impose constraints on how to perform the vertical layering. Our code generator transforms the layer operator setup into a nesting of BSDF nodes, where each BSDF could have different strategies for how to implement its layering. So if better methods for layering are found, this can be implemented underneath the same description. To render iridescence effects, we use the method from Belcore and Barla from 2017. This works well for both real-time and offline rendering. For users, this is also described as vertical layering, adding a thin film BSDF node over another BSDF. But it's implemented differently. When such configurations are found in the graph, we switch the Fresnel term on the base BSDF to a model that takes iridescence into account and this is supported on all the microfacet nodes. Our Sheen BRDF is based on the works by Imageworks. It's also layerable as a specular backscattering response to any other BSDF. As with the electrics, this is done with albedo scaling, here using a lookup table, both for OSL and GLSL. For GLSL we have additional simplifications. We ignore the geometry term and we use a smoother denominator in the microfacet expression. More implementation details that we didn't have time to cover here can be found in the course notes, for example how we handle lighting in GLSL, and links to all source code is also included. In this section we'll provide a few thoughts on the road ahead, and discuss some current and upcoming projects that build upon the work we've presented today. At Lucasfilm, one active area of research is the translation of material content between shading models, with that translation expressed as a material X graph that converts signals between the expected inputs of the two BSDFs. This approach works together with texture baking, allowing the translated material content to be converted to flat textures for efficient rendering. 
In the slides we've presented today, we've used this technique to translate BB-8 and R2-D2 from Lucasfilm's production shading model, Unified Surf, to the standard surface model for transport to external teams. Because both of these shading models can be expressed effectively as a graph of physically-based shading nodes, it's straightforward to render them consistently within a single reference application like MaterialX View, where translation graphs between models can then be developed and tested. A second area of research and development is the extension of MaterialX code generation to new shading languages beyond OSL and GLSL. At the GPU Technology Conference earlier this year, Autodesk and NVIDIA presented a new MaterialX code generator for the Material Definition Language, or MDL, and the code for this project can be found on GitHub. Autodesk has also been developing early support for HLSL, and here we're seeing a glimpse of this work in a preview build of 3ds Max, where generated OSL has been cross-compiled to HLSL for the real-time viewport. And in preparation for cloud-based workflows, the Autodesk Forge team has been working on code generation for WebGL, including new JavaScript bindings for the MaterialX API. A third area that we're following closely is the development of standardized material libraries based on portable shading models expressed as BSDF graphs. At Lucasfilm, we've long been developing a common material library based on our production shading model, which for recent shows has been extended to the full set of look development tools that our artists use. Here you're seeing a small set of library presets that were developed for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. On the left are hand-authored Imperial Tech materials used for sequences such as the Battle of Exegol, and on the right are sand and rock materials that were physically captured in the Jordan Desert for use in building digital environments that could blend with principal photography. As an illustration of how these presets were used in production, here's a breakdown of the Pasana speeder chase sequence in which the terrain was constructed as a digital environment by Industrial Light and Magic. Starting with the Jordan Desert presets from our common material library, ILM artists built the complex layered materials for the CG environment using multiple look development packages, ultimately blending the results with both green screened and on location photographic elements. Another broader example is Autodesk's upcoming standard surface library, which is designed to provide consistent visuals for materials across the full suite of Autodesk tools, including not only media and entertainment packages like Maya and 3ds Max, but also architecture and design applications like Revit and Inventor. Finally, we're excited about this recent project from our colleagues at Pixar, which takes a first step towards integrating MaterialX with their Unified Scene Description, or USD. In this render, you're seeing a first glimpse of this work with OSL code generation used to display MaterialX assets in the RenderMan backend for Hydra. In this initial prototype, code generation is only used for pattern graphs, but Pixar ultimately plans to extend this work to physically-based shading graphs and additional Hydra renderers such as Storm. For those who are interested in following up on the work we've discussed today, the code is all available on the MaterialX GitHub and we greatly welcome contributions from the community. We'll add links to example projects in our speaker notes, and one particularly good starting point is the MaterialX Viewer, which uses GLSL code generation for its real-time viewport and supports the full set of physically-based shading nodes. Because our GLSL code base needs to support all combinations of BSDFs and light types, it can also be a useful reference for real-time physically-based shading, and we welcome ideas from the community on how to make it more effective and approachable for new readers. On the OSL side, we're interested in proposing additional closures that would complete its support for the MaterialX physically-based shading nodes. For developers who are interested in participating in this discussion, we'll provide links to that project in the speaker notes. Thanks for watching our presentation today, and we'd like to extend special thanks to the artists, producers, developers, and researchers who have made this work possible, including the many talented folks on this slide.